Hello everybody, Kyle here, and welcome to part 16. Uh, hope everybody's having a good Christmas, because that's going to be when this is uploaded. Um, it is a shame that we already finished Conjunto Drifts before, like, Christmas, so... Oh, wait. Well, we're not going to be here for very long, but yeah. Uh, I love using dash jumps. So anyways, we're going to be cleaning up Magmore Caverns, and the phase on mines, I believe. No, Magmore Caverns, Chozo Ruins, and the phase on mines. Not in that order. So first we're going to head to, I believe, the Chozo Ruins. Get like a couple, I believe we have like one more artifact to get. And then there's, uh, then there's a couple items in Magmore Caverns. No, wait, it's Magmore Caverns, Chozo Ruins, and then phase on mines. Okay, there we go. I think I got it. Yeah, right now I believe we are heading back to get a couple of items. We're going to get the Ice Spreader, which is useless. We're going to get the Flamethrower on this part, which is also useless. It's really not, it's again, not an interesting part. Uh, kind of wish like there was more interesting bits, but unfortunately that's uh, about it. I really don't have much to say for this part, honestly, so it's just like... We're on the- we're nearing the end. And I'm also hoping that we'll get Sonic- a good chunk of Sonic Adventure's commentary done before this is finished, because otherwise, ooh boy, it's gonna- it's not gonna work. I think at that point I was looking for- I could still hear the last, uh, her, uh arrow trooper. So I was trying to figure out where he was, and then I just said ask her it. Though I still can uh, you know, one of the... I'm just like, I'm okay with my job. One of the things I don't really like is that uh, you only get Christmas off, and uh, that's it. You don't get... You don't really get uh, Christmas Eve off, and you also don't get, like... I'm just used to, like, having a winter break, I guess. Because that's how it's been for years. So this is the first time where... That sort of doesn't happen. I guess aside from... No, I guess aside from, like, uh, when I was at my delivery driver job, I guess that's also another instance. It's just something I gotta get used to. Or find a job where you do get Christmas and then one of the dog Like, honestly, most people are not gonna be around for, like, up to, like, New Year's. So it's really kind of, It really does feel kind of pointless to walk into work, but I'm going to because I I want to save up my PCO for something else later in the year. So, oh well. Uh, and now we have the Ice Spreader, which is really useless. I use it, I think, once, maybe twice in this playthrough. It's really not good. Like, the usefulness of these beam combo upgrades uh, pretty much caps out the Wave Buster. And even the Wave Buster is a bit excessive, because it's just like, it's only really useful for... It's only really useful against, like, um... Against the Space Pirate, the Beam Troopers. It's really only useful against them. I also have most of the image tanks in the game at this point. I think the last one's nearby the... Not the penultimate, not the ultimate boss, not the penultimate boss, but the boss before that. <laughs> I think is where you find the last energy tank. It's somewhere around there. It's in the phase on mines, I remember that much. Now then, Talon Overworld, we're just making a brief stop here, then we're going to get... Oh yeah, we're also getting a little bit of extra cleanup in Talon Overworld, since it's on the way. I believe it's just a missile though, it's nothing really big. Ah, these cleanup parts. I wish they weren't offloaded all to like the last three. But I think action should pick up in the parts soon after this. It's just like this just came up. I wanted to get like all the items, or at least almost all the items, by the time we fought the Omega Pirate, who is the boss of the phase on the phase on mines, my bad.
Uh, trying to make use of the day off to do something somewhat productive, I guess. Because I haven't really been productive with this channel for a little bit. I was kind of thinking maybe live streaming on Christmas Day or like Christmas Eve, but I decided against it ultimately. I just didn't feel like it. I should also like try editing these parts like in between the days where I don't record, where I don't upload. But I'm not very smart about it, apparently. And there's another missile. And I think that should be it for the overworld. I think. Nothing else really comes to mind. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah. Let me see, so how many... We have like... Oh god, we got like three ish. No, 18, I guess. Left in this part, so oh boy, I have nothing to really talk about. Um, I beat Bloodborne recently, so that's a thing. It's an okay game. It's good, just uh, I'm also trying to play Dark Souls 3 a little bit, and that game's a little bit... I'm trying to play that one as blind as I can, because I've kind of cheated in a bunch of the other games where I've kind of looked up where to go, so I'm trying not to do that with Dark Souls 3. Uh, a little bit annoying when I found out that, oh, I have to go to the main bonfire and teleport to the area I want to go from there, I can't just walk there. It, it makes it feel like th the areas are more levels rather than an internet connected world. Which is a little disappointing, it's one of the reasons why I like Dark Souls 1 so much the interconnectedness of its world. One of several reasons why I like it. Reason why I kind of like Metroidvanias in, in general. They're not like a... They're explorative games, but they're not quite as open as open world games, so they don't really fall... Usually they don't fall into like the same trappings as much. They're smaller open areas in a sense. Where you can still explore around and get like the same feeling from an open world game, but it's not quite. But you ignore, you don't have to deal with as much fluff or boring stuff. One of the key problems that I have with open world games, as I played more and more of them, is that they're rather boring to travel through, and there's really not much interesting to going on in between things most of the time, or it's just like monotonous TV shit. It's a lot of, I feel like a lot of open world games make that mistake, but apparently I'm in the minority who thinks that because people just like to t take off checklists, I guess, with no rhyme or reason, really. It's just one of the things that bugs me about open world games. It's so boring, and it's just like, there is also like, um, there's no interesting movement options. It's so slow, like in... Final Fantasy XV and Shadow of Mordor. What is physically stop? I know that it's it would be a pain to program this, but what is physically stopping my character from just teleporting across the map, or just teleporting long distances, or doing something interesting with with their abilities? Because they have the cool. But like eventually in Shadow of Mordor, you unlock the ability to teleport straight to an enemy and just kill them right off the bat, or stun them if you want. Or like battle or something like that, I don't know exactly what I'm this skill. But you get that. What's stopping my kids from using that to like teleport across the faster up there? Or to use it as an interesting movement option or something? It's just like... Can we figure out something to do here? Like, it's an open world game, but you basically are so restricted in what you can do that it's not very fun, if that makes any sense, which is also one of the reasons why I like Breath of the Wild. Because you are pretty much free to do almost whatever you want within the game's limits. It's very freeing. And it's just, like, it's very unrestricted. Unlike some open world games. It's just kind of the reason why I've kind of fallen out of favor with the games. I mean, granted, I still kind of, like, I, did, I don't, I'm not really able to play Breath of the Wild for very long anymore, because, like, <laughs> I've pretty much found everything there is to find. So doing a new playthrough where I'm finding how doing all that stuff again is just a little, 
I wouldn't say tedious, but it's definitely not, it doesn't have like the same magic as the first playthrough. I guess if you want to call, if you want to be, uh, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, I, I, I lost it. I don't know what word I'm looking for. Want to be dramatic about it, I guess? I don't know. So we got another artifact. I believe we have two left, and both are in phase on mines. Uh, anyways, back to like the tangent, because there's really nothing else to talk about at this point. Um, I guess I can talk about Metroid Prime 4 a little bit. I'm interested in seeing like which route they decide to go with the uh, beams. If they're going to go with a Prime 1 or 2 style system where you can switch beams, or if they're going to go for a Prime 3 style system where the beams stack on top of one another. Also, I'm really hope, and also uh, I'm hoping that motion controls are a thing that stay in the game. Like not extreme, like in Metroid Prime 3, but at least like the gyro aiming. It's something that I've grown to really like, and it makes me really disappointed when I see games that don't have it when they easily could, especially on PS4. It just feels kind of lame that it's not even an option given to me, because it's the only way. Because gyro aiming is really the only way to get like the sort of all close to the precision of like a mouse and keyboard but still using a controller like it's like the only way you can really do it reasonably and it's still kind of finicky but it's better than just trying to aim with sticks which is really hard to do you can get good at it sort of but the game's also handicapped but the game's also sort of handicapped it because you're it's using an atrocious amount of aim assist to help you aim back down here, I made sure to slow down when I was boosting down the hallway so I didn't fall over again, like I did a couple parts ago, which I edited out for you so you're welcome. Oh yeah, also uh, hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel because I want at least 69 subscribers, at the very least, come on people, do it for the memes, if nothing else, if you can't do it for me or this channel, you don't give a shit, please, at the very least, do it for memes. Of course, if you manage to make it this far into the video, chances are pretty good you actually like the video, or at the very least like my content. At least somewhat, if you made it this far. If you made it this far. Uh, my hiatus from YouTube and even like my wonky upload schedule kind of seem to be working against me. I don't think... Ma I don't know, I, it's hard to tell like if uh, people don't watch the videos because they're really good and not interested in the games that I'm doing, or if it's just like, did the algorithm fuck me over. It's, it's so hard to tell, or if you just decide, you know, we're not going to put this, promote this guy in the ear, this uh, guy's content into this short Oh, uh, this channel's always been a bit of a mess, I have no idea. Well, that's me and most of my life, so it's not really anything different. Let's see. So I'm just, not, I'm not even gonna bother using the general visor here. Uh, as much as I, as much as I, like, I mentioned, like, uh, I do kind of like the thermal visor and the idea of different visors, they are also kind of hard to look at, and I don't really like using them, so I can avoid it. It's just kind of how I am. Just, they're nice, but they're also just kind of a bit of an eyesore after a while. So I pretty much just say screw these enemies and I'll just because I just want to get because I'm gonna be coming back to the later. I'm gonna be backtracking in this room anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And dude, screw these metal grades. Like it's just I just want to boost more just to get to the place faster, but I keep on slamming right into the grades. Each time that can just be cool enough to come to a shot of that. There we go. I don't know why I took the more fall there, but okay. And here's where I find out that these enemies are indeed indestructible to anything except for the weapon. Because not even a not even a power bomb phases them. There we go, doors unlocked, so now we can get the flamethrower. Which I don't even think... I'm not sure if I used in this playthrough at all. 
Uh, it's very useless. It's got the reason for it is it's got pretty short range. It uses up your missiles like the Wave Buster does, but it doesn't like auto lock onto enemies, so it's not nearly as useful. Also, we got a straggler over here. Also, the way the Wave Trooper was placed may look like the uh, Ice Trooper was still shooting out a laser blast as it was closing. I thought was funny. There we go. The least interesting pirate trooper to fight. You just stun locked him to death. Ah, flamethrower. Useless. Muda, 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 muda. Oh, fuck. I can't do that. I have no idea how voice actors in JoJo manage to, like, say Aura or Muda so fucking fast without messing up. I have no idea how- I, I have friends that are able to do it and I just like, how? How do you do this without fucking up once? It, it's just remarkable, it's just like, it's almost- Maybe it's just me. It's probably just me. Uh, let's see now. What else can I talk about? Oh wait, we're almost at the pirate elite, I believe. Oh no, we still have trash to throw out. Down the corn shot. That's why I like the Also, there was another thing about the last beam that I forgot to mention is that it's actually a shorter range compared to other beams. Uh, I'm a bit late on saying this because like a demonstration of that was like much earlier in this part when we first entered phase on mines again. Uh, so yeah. Oops. I forgot to mention that. But honestly, the shorter range really doesn't matter most of the time, because most enemies are generally... Generally, the rooms are not big enough for the enemies to be far enough away that your beam will not hit. So it's really... it's kind of pointless in a way. So now we're going to wake this guy up. This is the Phazon Elite. He's a unique enemy that's one of the kind, so don't miss this game. So he's pretty much, it's pretty much second verse in the first. It's the same as like all, same as he's pretty much all of the elite pirate troops fight. You jump over their shockwave attack, you don't fight him while the hand's up. And he's, he takes a few more hits, but he's really not hard. I would be very interested I might actually do that, do a hard mode run of this game, maybe. Um, like, I don't know. I might decide to do it like for, as a live stream once the Dark Souls live stream is done. Or the Celeste one, whichever one happens first. Though I got a feeling the Dark Souls New Game Plus run is going to be finished a lot faster compared to the Celeste run. Because the Celeste... Ooh boy, 100% Celeste is going to be hard and also going to take a while. Because the, the farthest I've gone up in the difficulty for Celeste is the B side and chapter 9. Other than that, I have no idea what to expect with most of the C sides and the B sides, and I have no idea if I'm going to be able to do the Golden Strawberry run, Golden Strawberry runs, which if you don't know is basically you have to go through the entire level uh, without dying at all. And I think there's Golden Straw, there might be Golden Strawberries for B sides. So that's going to be a nightmare. Oh. Got a feeling Celeste's probably going to go on for at least half, I'm calling it now, three months to half a year. If I manage to finish it at all. I just go like, yeah this sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Alright. Oh, sorry. Okay. We're almost at the end of the part though. And then I think more interesting stuff should pop up. I think. I hope. Like this game is fun to play, it's just like watching it after all this. Also, I believe this is the impact that's the impact crater temple. So, I think it's a bit of phase on floating in the air. I think that's what it is. 
Uh, so that's a nice little bit of interconnected world design, or at least the illusion of it. Uh, game design, a lot of games are like just fancy smoke and mirrors. Like you're basically, that's probably not the actual model of the game. Or even like a facsimile of it, it's just something that they shoved into one of the rooms for this area. Though in a game like Xenoblade or Dark Souls, that might... If it were a game like that, with a world design like those, then it would be... There's a good chance that that would actually be the actual place. Also, I'm picking up the enemies here. And I can't really hear the music right now, but one of the things that I kind of wish that the game did with the Space Pirate theme is that it's doing this... It starts off with like this, uh... Uh, kind of... Uh... I'm not sure how to describe it. It starts off with like this melody at the beginning and then transitions into the full song. Um, what I kind of wish is that it wouldn't do that until like you actually start fighting the enemy. Though I suppose given like the frequency of how one combat's going to start, I guess it would, do, in most instances, it would just happen to line up. Like the beginning of the song would match up with when, roughly when you're about to fight enemies. Then when you actually encounter them, the full song starts playing. Uh, I imagine that they timed it such that it would work out that way for most players. Uh, game, de game design's like a really big, big sort of thing. It's just like it's really, it seems really hard to like do it well. It requires a degree of creativity, and I wouldn't really know that because I haven't really played too many. I haven't really made too many video games. I made like a project in Intro to Video Game Design course elective. Um, and yeah, that's kind of about it. Uh, also, the game that I've been working on for mobile phone. So, that, I am, I'm honestly not sure if I'm going to finish it or if I'm going to just move on to something else more interesting. I have no idea what I want to do with that at the moment. I'm honestly thinking of abandoning it and just doing something that's more interesting. Yeah. Or I don't know, maybe I'll take some YouTube answers. I have no idea where I'm going. Which direction I want to put my life into at this point. It's kind of normal for uh, somebody in his mid 20s, I suppose. Don't really know. So many directions that you could theoretically go in your life, but you don't really know which one you want. For now, though, I guess I'll just stick with that right now. Though I hope it's not for too long. Oh yeah, now we get to face a new version of the space pack, which honestly just seems like one of the other ones we fought. The Leap Pirate. Uh, was the last one called the Pirate the Leap? I don't even remember if they did names in some of these enemies. But honestly, there's hardly any difference between the Pirate the Leap Pirate and one of the other pirates that we faced at the very beginning of the phase on mines like a couple parts ago I have no idea what the difference is really other than this one doesn't have not doesn't have a cannon on the back so I just I think I was internally debate okay and there was the ice spreader it kills the enemy in one shot but it uses 10 missiles so it's really not going to be useful now I'll just freeze this guy and there we go we're done so I kind of debated whether or not I wanted to like just progress or if I wanted to save, and I decided to opt for saving. So, eh. But anyways, we're almost at the end of the part. Kyle, decide. There we go. There you go, past me. You made the right decision. Can't have these parts going on too, too long. So anyways, that's the end of the part. Hope to see you guys in part 17, uh, where I think we should be fighting the Omega Pirate. I think? Eh, maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, see you guys next part.